All right, yeah, so um, post me screwing up, consider what is the MSE mean squared error between these two things, right? Where MSE is this crazy looking formula, but we're just going to take this difference and then square it and then average it, right? So um, pause if you will to do this by hand or follow along. P is the width of this thing, right? So this is indexed by P. Most of these are going to be zero, right? Because zero minus zero is zero, right? So one half of zero minus zero squared is zero. In fact, because these are one hots, only one of, only two of these, I should say, are non-zero. So in this column, we are going to have one half of zero minus one squared, which is one half of negative one squared, which is one half. In this column, we're gonna have the same thing, but one minus zero, which ends up being one half. So what is our total? the one half that represents the first one plus the one half for the second one divided by oops, one over P where P here is one, two, three, seven. So one half plus one half is one. So our loss ends up being a seventh, right? That's, fairly small and we see that numpy I think agrees with me is that one seventh that might be two sevenths because numpy might not be using that or Keras might not be including the one half right but again we see that this loss is very very small right I've defined my array here I've defined my model or my desire eh. I have defined my labels here I've defined my model performance here I have created a Keras.losses.mean squared error and it turns out that thing is callable. When I call this, we get a bunch of diagnostic TensorFlow output because TensorFlow has to build a session and a graph and all this, but we don't care. And I get a result, and when I convert the result to NumPy so it's easy to read, I get 0 0.28 something, right? But notice, if this is the desired um, category, if this is the desired output in terms of category, then we got the category 100% wrong. We said we are 100, so we had, we wanted the network to 100% produce the fourth category and it 100% produced the first one. So it got the category entirely wrong. So with MSE, with a seven output, with a seven category um, classification problem, the basically the most our error could, well, okay, I don't wanna say that because it could, eh, yeah, so we're looking at when our network is completely wrong, an error of 0 0.28. That's not a lot, right? So introduce categorical cross entropy. Categorical cross entropy looks like this. And again, if this looks like painful, annoying math you don't wanna do, you don't have to. TensorFlow will do it for you, right? But, so this comes from information theory, where this thing is a measure of the efficiency of binary encodings. Okay, and if you're thinking, why the hell would that be a loss, right? What chain of thought would make someone think this function should be a good loss? That is a very good question, right? Remember from before, um, our loss really only has to have a couple of important properties, right? It has to be one output, right? It has to output one real number, right? It has to take a vector of multiple inputs, right? And it has to go down as performance improves, right? This happens to satisfy all of those properties. And, whoops, come on. It has the useful additional property that if we completely mess up our category category label, 
our loss ends up being much higher. So using the same D and the same M that we had before, if we compute the categorical cross entropy loss, we get the much higher 16.1, right? Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if we are, if this thing is useful for classification problems, and if we completely mess up our classes, right? If we 100% pick the wrong class, we want the loss to be big, and the categorical cross entropy does that, right? So the take home from this is that we usually use cross entropy loss and soft max, soft max activation for the final layer with classification problems, right? Notice that they pair fairly well, right? So cross entropy expects its input to make sense as a vector of probabilities, right? It expects its inputs to be in the range 0 to 1 and to sum to 1. Softmax's output has exactly this property, okay? So after, so, after all of that, here is the fairly trivial modification we have to make to get a softmax, softmax activation and categorical cross-entropy loss. All right, Whew, starting to get a little tongue-tied. So, we just replace the activation on the last layer only with softmax, which will enable us to very easily interpret these as probabilities, right? Because they're going to be normalized to be in zero to one, and they'll sum to one, like probabilities do. And then we just replace this with categorical cross entropy, and we'll get that nice loss that is something big when the category is completely wrong. And we don't have to change anything else, right? That's the wonderful thing about Keras, is that we no longer have to give a damn about the math, okay? So yeah, I'll, I'll go to the lesson slide and then I'll show the modified code, right? So the lesson here, for a lot of things, MSE is fine. And in particular, when we're doing regression, when we're trying to approximate a function, for example, MSE, which is mean squared error, is perfectly okay, right? When you're doing classification, use softmax for the last layer and use cross entropy or one of its friends, and there are a couple of other like variants of this thing, right, that we're not going to concern ourselves with right now, right? Use softmax or one of its buddies as the loss. There you go.